Hi, welcome back to the show. Humans have always been fascinated by the mysteries of the cosmos. Ever since the first person gazed up at the night sky, we've been asking questions that puzzle us to this day, like, do aliens exist? And if so, are they super hot like Jeff Goldblum in Earth Girls Are Easy? For that last question, I'll need to study the evidence in private. You don't want to see that. It's going to get messy. But the first question is one we can explore together in tonight's edition of Unsolved Mystery. What? We can't legally call it that? Mother! For thousands of years, history is filled with potential close encounters. From the Bible, where the prophet Ezekiel saw a chariot in the sky, to the cavemen whose prehistoric videos of aliens have been dug up by archaeologists. But the UFO obsession as we know it today began much more recently. Mysterious objects in the sky first began to surface when Kenneth Arnold reported seeing nine silvery disks flying over Mount Rainier. The first few days in July of 1947 had a very large level of exciting activity. William Rhodes saw the strange craft in the sky. Rhodes offers his photographs to the Arizona Republic, a side-by-side -side comparison between Kenneth Arnold's sketches and William Rhodes' photos illustrates the uncanny similarities between the objects sighted. Fortunately, the aliens didn't take Kenneth from us, or we would have been deprived of one of our great artists. Ever since then, stories of alien sightings, visitations, and even abductions have been a constant in our culture. But in the past few years, shocking new evidence has brought the not-solved mystery of UFOs one step closer to becoming un-not-solved. The Pentagon now confirms this footage, the footage you're watching, is legit and was in fact taken by Navy personnel. One of the associated videos released shows an encounter between an unknown object and two Navy F-18 fighter jets off the coast of San Diego as they tried to chase it. The egg-shaped object in the video appeared to defy the laws of physics. Finally, the Pentagon has released official videos of UFOs, all of them apparently recorded on a Sanyo camera phone from 2002. In a surprising twist, the Pentagon confirmed these videos were real after they were put into the mainstream in 2017. A recent report by the New York Times unveiled the existence of a secret government program to investigate mysterious flying objects. There's really been a, a sea change of attitude towards this topic. It's not to say that there's no more ridicule, but it's way less. There's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. I think that we're... Uh, people still take seriously trying to investigate and figure out what that is. We cut that clip before he says, and if I did know, I'm not going to tell James Corden, that thirst machine. Everything changed in June when we learned that the government had a lot more nothing to tell us. A provision in December's COVID relief bill required government agencies to disclose everything they know about UFOs. The result? An inconclusive report only nine pages long, including filler like the cover, some useless appendices, and of course, a fun puzzle page for the kids. Why didn't the government take action sooner? Were they hiding something? We can definitively say yes. Or maybe no, but most likely, probably. Many UFO sightings in the 50s and 60s were really just top secret technology created by the US or possibly by foreign adversaries. But instead of coming clean, the government allowed people to believe these objects were otherworldly because it was a useful cover up for top secret military programs. Think of it as Santa Claus for adults. Aliens weren't bringing gifts of conspiracy and fear, it was mom and dad all along. I'm a former intelligence officer for the United States Air Force. We don't call it disinformation, we call it counterintelligence operation. If some people tapped into something or they photographed things that were being tested at Kirtland Air Force Base, we have to develop an operation and convince them of what they saw were UFOs. When it comes to UFOs, the government lies more than an area rug cheating on its wife. And the origin of these lies can be traced back to a little town in New Mexico. Roswell was an obscure outpost of the U.S. Air Force's Strategic Air Command. Then, in 1947, a local rancher found what he claimed to be a flying saucer that had crashed on his land. 
the Air Force first said it was a flying disc. Later, they changed their story, saying it was a weather balloon. And the 1990s officials said it was actually a nuclear test surveillance balloon, not a weather balloon. Essentially, an airborne bugging device to listen out for possible Soviet nuclear tests and missile launches. The government's lack of transparency set off generations of distrust and conspiracy mongering that we may never recover from. But it was all worth it to keep the Soviets from knowing that we'd figured out how to use balloons. All we can really say at this point is that we know a little bit more about what we don't know, which is a big deal given the U.S. government's history of stonewalling on this topic, and we're still learning more. For the first time in decades, NASA resumed funding for the search for extraterrestrial life. We're hoping for the best, but knowing science funding, it's probably going to be a bunch of nerds sitting by the phone waiting for their alien crush who may never call. Statistically speaking, some kind of life probably exists out there, but sadly, it's most likely to be bacteria and not even the good kind that helps you poop. But even evidence of alien microbes would be huge, so we have to get past the stigma of looking for life, and we need regulation and a centralized government organization for that search. There's way too much at stake to risk leaving first contact up to whichever rich space dork spends the most money to get there. Besides, we can't afford to let Jeff Bezos put Alien Borders bookstore out of business, too. Most important, we should follow the lead of other countries by declassifying our UFO files. Because as much as we love our mysteries, history has taught us time and again that government secrecy doesn't end well. Regardless of whether extraterrestrials exist, the big story here may be the government's apparent shift toward openness. And if it turns out aliens have visited us, that transparency will be more important than ever as we decide how to handle the threat of mysterious visitors lurking in our airspace, monitoring our military technology, and perhaps even infiltrating the highest levels of our government. I'm the president. Yeah. Ah, ah. For Not Solved Mysteries, I'm Robert Stack. Nanu Nanu. Aw, thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, hit subscribe and visit our page for more videos. Or if you'd like to be radicalized, leave YouTube on autoplay.